Hello everyone, my name is Jasmine McCoy and welcome to my channel. If you are new here, thank you for clicking in to drop by. But if you are a returner, it is always nice to have you back. This video, I am going to be talking about the rest of my first week as a medical student at the Northwestern University Feinberg School of Medicine. If you are looking for a video specifically of my first day as a medical student, you can go find that video. I will put the link in the description if you want to watch just that. This is going to be about the rest of that first week, so Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Whew, at the time of filming this, it is the end of Tuesday, day number two as a medical student. And Friday is going to be awesome because I'm finally going to get my white coat. <sighs> that is going to be the best part of this video. I kid you not. I know that is going to be the best part of me putting on that white coat, but <sighs> we have to wait till the end of the video. Today, they wanted us to work on and understand the importance of communicating with the patient. And they had us do this at three separate levels. At the beginning of the day, we had one patient, patient A, come in and talk to all 150 of us with one of our deans, where the dean was essentially doing an interview, asking the patient about their healthcare experience, about what it means to be here at Feinberg, what makes a positive healthcare experience versus a negative healthcare experience, what is something that you would give as advice to all of these incoming medical students. So we had that. We were also able to ask patient A questions as well. So I'm not gonna tell you the question that I asked, but I did have one of my peers say, Jasmine, that was a great question. I've been wanting to tell you all day that you asked a great question during that first session. Okay, second tier. They had us break off into 18 different groups, they said. And roughly, that's gonna be about seven people. So everyone goes off to their different groups and yet again we had another patient come in different for all the groups to talk about their experience in healthcare yet again the third tier is when they divided us up even more and it was just two patients going and sorry it was two students going to speak to one patient and everyone was thinking oh okay the doctor will be there and us will be able to observe. And they said, no, no, no. It's just you and your partner with the patient. Already on the second day of medical school, I am just being left alone with the patient to talk with them about their experience in healthcare. And it was something that I truly valued, something that I feel like I had a little bit more comfortability in because of the fact that I was in the pre-matriculation program. We have been uh, simulating these kinds of conversations and questions that we might ask so I felt a lot more comfortable being the one in that interview position and it was very good another thing oh my god another thing that we had happen today is we received our medical equipment and some other things in the goodie bag but our medical equipment is made possible by the donations of our alumni association if you are an alumni of Feinberg School of Medicine and you are watching my video, thank you so very much for your donations, which make it so that we are able to get these. And specifically, this is nice. This is very, very nice. And it's customized. It has my name on it. Okay, let's get this out so I can show you all. The first, I've already looked inside of it because the first thing everyone did when they got this is they all checked their name. But inside, I have one of these little reading cards, which we had all the time everywhere at the Retina Associates of Cleveland. But, okay, other things inside. I'm trying to stay calm. Other things inside, tuning fork. I also have a pin light. The pin light also has a pupil gauge on it. Another thing that I saw all the time at the Retina Associates. Um, a tuna fork, what's, not fork, a tuning fork, sound fork. I don't really know what this is, but we'll figure that out. It's just my second day of medical school. 
I also get a hammer and the most important thing, the thing that everyone was checking to make sure had their name spelled right because it is customized, we all received a stethoscope. So out on here, you should be able to see my name, Jasmine McCoy. This is my stethoscope. And I'm going, I don't know when exactly I'm going to need this for school, but I'm guessing that they will let us know when we have to bring our stethoscopes and whatever other things that they dictate from this materials box. Look at it, look at it. I have a stethoscope of my own with my name on it. Guys, this is so exciting. Like I never would have thought that I would get one of these so early in my medical that was a tuning fork. I never thought that I would get something like this so early in my medical school experience, but here we are. So here is a little bit, oh, one more thing. We also had, we also got out early. So people went to Tall Boy Tacos. I had a fun time there. I ended up getting the churros today because last time, if you remember watching the pre-matriculation video, last time i had gotten the nachitos which is small nachos but this time i got the churros which were very nice so here's a little bit of video now from my second day as a medical student at northwestern university feinberg school of medicine did get a little excited with the equipment so I forgot some of the other things that were in the gift bag. I've got my Thompson Society shirt which is what I will wear for the Society Olympics and this is the Huntington Center I believe. I've also got a guide to the initial medical interview and physical examination. I've got a Northwestern MD 2024 t-shirt and I have a Northwestern Medicine Feinberg School of Medicine tumbler. Very nice gifts. I am at the end of day number three, which is Wednesday. And as you can see, we did have to get a little dressed up. So the way that we started off today is it was focusing on the student as a team member. So obviously we were doing team-based activities and the way that they twisted these activities to be like, oh yes, I like that. I like what you did. That was something that had all of us going, like you did a great job. You got us, this is amazing. They asked us not to share the details, so I won't. They also had us do a self-reflection exercise where we talked about our identity and the multiple categories that make us who we are and how certain categories might be seen more often, certain categories you might think of more often or you don't think of. Certain categories might afford you privilege versus other categories which might lead to you being a victim of discrimination. So we did that self-reflection activity I enjoyed it. And the most, 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 most important part of today is we had a tour of one of the neighborhoods in Chicago. And here are a little bit of highlights from that tour now.
successfully perform an open heart surgery. The five foot eight black dude, he did it on the south side of Chicago at Providence Hospital. It was an all black hospital founded in 1891. He performed that. Now, y'all the people to ask, as I understand it, your heart sits in a sack, right? And so this dude, James Cornish, got stabbed in the chest. Dr. Dan sewed the abnormal, so he gets stabbed in the chest and the knife nicks that sack. And Dr. Dan sews that abnormality up. And that's considered the world's first successful open heart surgery because he had to crack the dude's chest plate to get in there to do that. Now, I know you know that there's a tool that you use to crack the dude's chest plate. Well, that tool wasn't invented in 1893 when the world's first successful open heart surgery took place. Before you do surgery, you're gonna be like, hey, let me check out that x-ray. There was no such thing as x-rays in 1893. Before you do surgery, you're going to tell the dude to count to 10, and he's going to count to 10, and he's going to wake up, and his family's going to be around him. Because there's anesthesiology. And guess what? No such thing as anesthesiology in 1893. They basically gave you morphine, and they hoped you didn't kick the bucket. So, without modern surgical tools, without LED lighting, without um, x-rays, without anesthesiology, Five foot eight black dude on the south side of Chicago at an all black hospital performed the world's first successful open heart surgery here in front of his house. I want you to also think about that. We think about south side of Chicago. I take questions. Hey, we can roll, Broski. The next important thing of the day and the reason why you see me all dressed up is we had our faculty dinner. Now, Yesterday, on Tuesday, I did receive an email letting me know that I would be sitting at the Dean's table. I didn't do anything special. I don't know how they picked me, if it was specific, I don't know if it was random, just I ended up at the Dean's table. Very exciting, so I had to make sure, okay Jasmine, we're gonna make sure that we're looking nice, the makeup is going to be good, we're going to make sure that we have all those good table manners and etiquette things down pat. So, after we had the tour, I go home, I get dressed, we go to the Chicago City Club, which is a very fancy venue here in the city of Chicago. I am able to sit at the center table with the Dean, Dr. Nielsen, and his wife, they were very nice people, as well as, you know, make my rounds, get to know all of the people that I haven't yet met in my class. And here's a little bit of video now from the faculty dinner. Tonight is different. 
some of them meeting some of your faculty. Sprinkled through the room are many of our distinguished faculty, and they're eager to talk to you, as hopefully you are to them. And I thank all of them for taking the time out of their busy schedule to be with us. When that was over, members of the class went over to a rooftop bar named Cindy's, and I liked Cindy's, mostly because of the, you know, the view of the skyline. It was beautiful. It was gorgeous. I was able to take some really cute pictures. I absolutely love them. So people hung out there for a little bit. Some people got more drinks. I was just, you know, taking my pictures, talking to people. And then afterwards, things started splitting up a little bit more and I was tired. So I came back home to film this, edit another video, and now I will be going to sleep. So we're getting closer. We're getting closer to the white coat ceremony. Can you believe this? The white coat ceremony is in two days. For you, it's going to be in like 10 minutes in this video, but ah, it's going to be good. It's going to be very good. I am ready for my white coat. At this point, I am at the end of Friday night, so my week is done. But I do want to tell you all about what happened on Thursday. Thursday, I didn't have any filming to do because part of it was there wasn't anything to film. Part of it was that I could not film. So for the first part of the day, we were learning about the study resources that are available to us. That way we can succeed academically. That for me was something I had already gone through because of being in the pre-matriculation program. And then the second half of the day, they split us yet again into multiple groups. My group was one that was assigned to go and follow the kitchen. And the common thread between all of these different groups is that we were following people who work in the hospital, but are not doctors. So some people followed social workers, billing, some people followed transport, and we were doing that to get an understanding and appreciation of how much goes in to making a hospital work seamlessly. The kitchen group had the best time because obviously it is just very interesting being able to see how it is they work and how it is that, I mean, if you've ever been at a restaurant, you know when the waiter comes up, your eyes light up, you smile, you're like, yes, you are the person with the food, I like you. So being able to see that same expression, that same appreciation in the hospital is something that is equally as satisfying. But at the end, they did gift us, the people following them, with a little bit of treats as well. We got ice cream and some cake. So everyone was jealous of us. And now, to talk about Friday, the day of White Coat. There were a lot of things happening, so much so was happening that I decided to just get myself all the way ready, put my dress on, put my shoes into a little um, shoe bag and take that with me to go to orientation because I did not want there to be any hiccups. <sighs> And there were no hiccups. It was a beautiful day. It was an amazing day. <sighs> My interview. Also, you all don't know, but I was asked to participate in an interview, which is going to be aired, shown, revealed somehow, some way on Northwestern Feinberg's social media. I assume that it will be on their YouTube channel, their Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, that maybe it a quote that I give will be dropped into an article they use somewhere. But I, me, I was one of six people that they asked to participate in these interviews on the day of White Coat. So I go, we have the last couple of things for premature, for orientation week. And then I'm sitting, waiting for, you know, the big thing and Everyone goes and gets their white coat. Everyone's looking to make sure that everything is spelled right. Everything is spelled right. I met my M2 buddy, Taylor Keys. Absolutely love her. She also was able to give me a little tips and tricks to make sure that I had a positive experience during my white coat ceremony. She had me sitting in the right seat 
to make sure that I was able to get a little video of myself having that white coat placed on me, which I will show you all soon. And after that, we went off to the reception. The reception is where everyone was taking all these amazing pictures as groups and then also as individuals. A little bit through that, I went and I, you know, delivered my interview. And at the end of my interview, Kim, Kim was the uh, camera woman. She said, you sound really good. Do you do motivational speaking? I don't do motivational speaking, but I definitely feel like that is a, rear, a career I could have gone into. And I felt just very natural, very at ease. There weren't many times that they had to ask me to repeat things. It was good. Whenever that comes out, I'm sure that I will make sure to let you all know. That way you can see what it is I said, but I did have my family get a few snippets of my interview. And then after that, they went back to their hotel, my family's hotel. We went and we went to Chicago 360, and then we had a little bit of dinner. So here are those videos now from Friday. What's your last name? McCoy. What's your name? Thank you. I can't speak to the photo. Listen, it's like when I go to What? That gymnasium is too fast. Look at my future doctor right here. Okay. Look at her. Northwestern. Yeah, I got I'm sorry. One, two. Why is it our colleges? <laughs> Why is it our colleges? Yeah. Oh, I saw the call. Yeah. In case you haven't right. talked it's, to it's your four. Yeah. I'm like, can I see them? I'm gonna be a doctor. I'm gonna get my white coat at the end of this Founders Day celebration. Oh my God. It's happening! I needed to listen to my heart and follow my gut rather than follow the advice of many well-meaning people around me. I also learned that when people tell me that I cannot do something, all it really means is that I cannot do it with them. Ooh, I like that. Dr. Kelly Lorenti and Dr. Robert Sanchez, please stand and assist in your way of one with their way.
first week as a medical student at Northwestern University Feinberg School of Medicine. This is the start of my journey in medical school. I am another step closer to becoming a physician and it feels so good. Thank you very much for watching this video. I am so happy to have had you here watching, enjoying, just seeing something that I've been working really hard to make and really hard to do with my life than to put it here for entertainment for you all is something that just feels amazing. So thank you again for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye!